Pandora. Hello, I'm learning. Um, thank you. Um, I am happy to be here tonight uh, with such a distinguished group. I, I arrived to Aotearoa uh, from Los Angeles just over two weeks ago, and I'm fresh out of quarantine. Mark was not lying, uh, literally Wednesday, so, and that was in Auckland, so now I'm here and I'm going back tomorrow. Um, so it really is a pleasure to be maskless uh, <laughs> and to meet all of the amazing people here tonight. Um, I want to thank Mark, and, and I probably should take you with me everywhere I go to introduce me, that was, that was great, um, <laughs> and the Hillary Institute for the invitation to speak and, I, and the opportunity to share the stage with Helen Clark and Christiana Figueres and Mayor Dalziel and Peter Hillary, who I had a chance to meet earlier before this event, and James Shaw and so many other luminaries. It's an honor to be an Edmund Hillary Fellow in Cohort 7. Uh, in our first set of Zoom calls, the fellows joined from around the world, and I was blown away by the people in the group, their accomplishments, and the incredible talent that the group will add to the New Zealand business, technology, charitable, and environmental ecosystems. I was also so impressed with the community that has already been built in previous cohorts by Yosef and his team, and I look forward to collaborating with the entire EHF for now. Peter, we are all anxious to try to fulfill Sir Ed's vision. I'm also happy to generally just be in New Zealand. <laughs> I cannot tell you how lucky I feel to be in arguably the most desirable place in the entire world right now. Uh, in fact, the main question I got when I told people I was moving was, do you have any room in your luggage? Everybody wanted to come. Um, New Zealand's on a roll right now. The COVID-free status has made the country the envy of the world. The leaders in the fight against climate change, hosts of the America's Cup, and the Kiwi accent was even recently voted the sexiest in the world. <laughs> so when, when it rains, it really pours, okay? <laughs> you, don't, you don't agree? No? <laughs> so how did I get so lucky to be living in New Zealand? Well, first I married a Kiwi. My wife, Jessica, who's in Auckland right now, is from San Francisco originally, but she's a dual US New Zealand citizen because her mother was born and raised in Wellington. Jessica grew up coming here to visit family, and, and I have come with her several times over the years. Um, we absolutely love this country and all of the experiences we've had here, and we were always trying to figure out how to spend more time here. So logically, I bought a basketball team. <laughs> That's a way to get here. Um, so during our last holiday here in December and January, I read an article on ESPN.com about the growth of the Australian NBL and the success of New Zealand's team, the Breakers. I was intrigued, and I tracked down the leader of the ownership group of the team, my now partner, Matt Walsh. Matt and I shared a vision of what the team could be on and off the court. We are not the Auckland Breakers, we are the New Zealand Breakers. We belong to the entire country. And we aim to win on the court and represent New Zealand in the west, best way possible. We have a female COO and recently our club's first female uh, assistant coach. Why? Because they're the best at what they do. Uh, over a thousand kids come through our facility every week to participate in our youth clinics and leagues. And this season, we have seven tall blacks who will be playing for our team. And with that quasi New Zealand national team, we expect to bring home a championship. We also have an incredible platform off of the court. We envision an organization that serves our community with outreach to underserved groups and to New Zealand's youth. Basketball is the number one youth participation sport in the country, and we, can, we want to continue to grow that. Our recent celebrity basketball game raised over $650,000 for the Starship Children's Hospital and gave away over 2,000 free tickets to school groups throughout Auckland 
so that they can attend the game and be inspired. The mix of politicians, musicians, all blacks, business leaders, and other stars was a sight, a sight to behold, um, as was David Seymour's unique form on his jump shot. <laughs> we will continue this type of outreach to involve the community and to raise money for worthwhile causes. In 2021, I'm planning to launch the Breakers Early Stage Technology Accelerator. We will use our platform to activate our partners and sponsors to invest in and help develop early stage New Zealand technology companies. Why would a basketball team have a tech accelerator program? Because we can help entrepreneurs scale their businesses and we can link them with our partners and sponsors and because we have a fan base who's, really, who's interested in cutting edge products and technology. Additionally, we can touch on businesses that, have, that focus on a variety of issues and needs. Of course, it makes sense that we would want to invest in a health data and wearables company, as an example, but what about COVID relevant technology that allows for contactless interaction? Think about facial recognition software for ticketing or contactless payment for concessions. We want to be innovators. We also have to think about sustainability in our arena. With 9,000 people coming through on a given night, we have to do our part and be leaders to minimize our carbon footprint. As we all try to help address the climate issues facing our world, it is imperative that we all do our part, big and small. So yes, there is a role for a basketball team to play in these efforts. And speaking of climate change in the world, I've been asked to comment on the incoming Joe Biden and Kamala Harris administration in the United States and how I think they will contribute to working on the issue. Uh, a bit of background, uh, I've known our Vice President-elect Kamala Harris for 14 years and most recently served as the national co-chair for her presidential campaign. I know her as someone who listens, who is a leader, and who, while tough, is willing to collaborate in order to get the best solution. I also know the importance of the climate change issue to her. And I know that when Joe Biden asked her to be on his ticket, a climate change, climate and energy plan was at the top of the list of the issues they wanted to address. Given the last four years in the United States, the bar to lead on this issue is low. However, it is not good enough to just do better than a divisive leader and climate change denier. That's a given. What is important is to lead on the issue, and Joe Biden has committed to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement immediately and to achieve 100% clean energy economy and net zero emissions no later than 2050. I am far from an expert on this subject, but I am hopeful because I know that leadership matters, collaboration matters, listening matters, these are attributes that have been missing from the top level of the United States government, and I look forward to those traits returning. I truly believe that New Zealand is at the beginning of a golden age for the country. The impressive talent that is already here is being joined by so many Kiwis who are coming back home, bringing experience, expertise, global perspective, and a love for this wonderful country. I feel so lucky to have the opportunity to play a small part in this next chapter. And I thank you for so warmly welcoming me to my new home. Thank you very much.